Hey guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 22. As you can see on the screen, we are going to be using a controller overlay for the DualSense controller. Now if you're new to the channel, you may not know what controller I'm used to, so I will explain now. Basically for me, I do use the DualShock 4, which was effectively the PS4's controller. Love the way that controller feels, the sensitivity on the triggers, the analog sticks feel great as well on the DualShock, and ultimately, it's my favourite controller. However, the current one I use that I'm really honed in with, it's got uh, probably the best configuration, has started to fade a bit and it's got a little few problems. I was recording a Superbike video recently and it had problems within that race, so unfortunately, I've decided maybe it's time to move on to the DualSense controller. So I already have a few of these, and well... I like it for playing other games, but when it comes to racing and I'm tuned in, I need my DualShock 4 controller, so I'm trying to change that habit, and today is going to be part of that. So as you can see on the right side of the screen, you have my controller overlay for the DualSense. The brighter the trigger goes, is more pressure into that trigger, so as you see it illuminate really white, it does mean that that is being pressed a lot, and it's unfortunately I've gone wide there, not confident enough with the front brake, which is set L2. So for my controls in this video I would like to explain as thus. L2 is the front brake, R2 is the acceleration, R1, you'll see that uh, press in a moment as we go down the shifts into turn 1, that is my downshift as you can see on screen right now, and square is being held for the rear brake. Triangle is the upshift which you'll see now, upshifting up once and then downshifting with R1. And finally, X button is set as the ride height device. You will see at the bottom right corner it does say the A button, but unfortunately on PC it does give you the Xbox prompts rather than the Sony's prompts. So, with that in mind, I'm going to be trying to get used to this controller and see if we can top the session as Danny Pedroza on board the KTM RC16. Of course, if you've watched MotoGP this weekend, you'll know that Danny Pedroza topped FP1 which was absolutely sensational, the 37-year-old test rider just uh, coming in and looking like he's never left. A brilliant performance from Danny Pedrosa. And of course, the KTM's looking pretty solid this weekend after seeing the results in the sprint race just earlier on. So with the differences of the controllers then, this is what uh, is going to be difficult for everyone. Now, of course, if your preference is at Xbox, you're probably not going to understand or really really pay much attention to the differences of the controllers because I find the Xbox One and the Xbox Series controllers is pretty much identical so I don't think there's any issues with swapping over. I may be wrong if I am, let me know in the comments section down below. But the jump from the DualShock to the DualSense is a it's a different controller. The DualSense is a beefier, larger controller. It reminds me more of the Xbox rather than the slim, sleek, plastic design of the DualShock 4. Now the thing for me is it's the sensitivity with the triggers. I I'm so in tuned with the DualShock that coming to the PS5's DualSense just feels odd. I have that lack of confidence in the brakes. I find the whole controller rumbles now rather than just the part where I'm used to. So with all that rumble constantly happening, I find I'm not relying on the rumble as much. With the DualShock, I was really able to find that point of just about to crash or also keeping the tightest of apexes. And with the dual sense, I just don't have that confidence yet. Of course it will come, but I'm gonna have to spend some time doing it. And so far, these early laps, I don't feel great. I, I really don't. I don't feel very confident with the bike. I don't feel confident moving in, bringing acceleration on, and especially on the front end. The brakes is where it's really, really got me nervous. I'm apprehensive about braking in a lot of these corners. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know how confident I am when it comes to MotoGP 22. I'm pretty solid. You can get good high lap times on the uh, on the record books, but unfortunately, it's going to be difficult with the dual sense. But I'm definitely going to give it a try. We have the new MotoGP career mode coming out soon, but it's going to be with Marco Melandri on board the Kawasaki back in 2009, and I'm. Not sure whether I should use this dual sense. I guess it would make things interesting, but it would also make things a little bit infuriating for me if I've got to try and learn and race at the same time. But I like a challenge, so maybe that's how we'll do it. But, oh, small moment getting caught in the rumble strip, but ride height device enabled and across the line. We have 
pulled ourselves in within a second of Ineo Bassanini's best time of a 136.838. So we're trending in the right direction. I do feel that we can get to the top by the end of this video. I don't know how many laps it's going to take, but I'm prepared to, to stay for the long haul. And I hope you guys are too. And of course, if you are enjoying the content, be sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing as well. It does help out the channel and I would like to entertain you with a lot more MotoGP videos, Ride 4 and even Superbike 22. And of course, right on the brink of the horizon is the new TT Isle of Man game. So keep an eye out for that as well on the Dr. Ace channel. So it's a red split in the first and second sector. I don't feel too bad in those first two splits. My concern is turn seven up into the Angel Nieto corner, into Ferrari, Carivier, those fast points, that's where I'm a little bit nervous about. Just don't have that front end feeling yet. And of course it's gonna happen with anyone who changes over with controllers. You do have that sense of, this is alien to me. This doesn't make sense. This controller doesn't behave how I want it to. And that's what I'm experiencing right now. But uh, love the DualSense controller overlay. I think it's fantastic. It looks really good. I kind of prefer the DualShock one where I had where it had like a gauge for the right trigger where it would actually increase the uh, the bar rather than changing the colour or the, uh, the opacity of that particular trigger. But I do really like it and I think it was made by Gerard D. You can find him online and you can actually check out his uh, designs. It's from Xbox and PlayStation as well. I'll leave a link in the description down below so if you want to use this particular controller overlay you can find it in the, in the link in the description down below. So a big thank you to Gerard D for making this. I was really concerned about trying to find a DualSense overlay that would work. A lot of them require you to download DS4 which is DualShock 4 Windows and I really don't like it. I don't even think it is DualShock 4 but I think it's something like that but I don't like it because I find the games that I was getting PlayStation prompts now only get Xbox prompts and I don't like an extra software on my system if I don't need it so for me perfect all I had to do was plug in the controller with the USB-C and we are away and good and getting on with the content so for this lap it's uh, we're on the back foot down by three tenths of a second we're not really going to replicate what Danny Pedrosa's has done in FP1 at this stage Bassinini Juan Mir on the Suzuki. God, I bet you he wishes he was back on that Suzuki. And Mark Marquez in third place as it stands for FP1 here in the Angel, uh, Angel Nieto circuit of Jerez. So I'll bring you on the power. We'll now get to the right hand side and hopefully keep it in tight. Lost a bit of confidence turning in then. Felt like I could have actually gone for that, but I wasn't able to make it so as we now go firm on the brakes. Here we go now into the left hand side. A little bit deep there. Way too deep, as a matter of fact, so we now bring on the power and try and line it up. Oh, I got caught in the rumble strip. I don't think we were going to make much of an improvement there, but some improvement would have been better rather than none at all. One thing I can take grace with and be quite proud of is I've not crashed yet, which is good. I don't like crashing, and of course nobody else does, and I'm good that I feel like I've not had to do it. To find the limit, I've not had to push that far yet. I feel like I'm still within my limits, but I think I've got to push a bit more, you know. Got to try and take a few risks over the next couple of laps, but we are ahead in the first split, and that's way too late. Oh, it's too late, that. Oh, yeah, we just got it stopped. Yeah, that was too late. <laughs> I think I uh, walked myself into that one. Let's get back into the pits, get a change of tyres, and then let's get back onto the track. So here we go then, guys, on our second run. I have changed over the tyres. I've gone for a soft front now and a medium rear. I'm looking for that front end feel and I'm thinking that the soft could be the tyre to do it. Now if you know my channel, if you're familiar with my work, I don't change any of the settings uh, suspension, gearing, I don't tend to change anything, I'll just leave it as it is so you guys can follow exactly what I've done and then you can make your changes to make yourselves even faster. So if you're trying to replicate what I'm doing today, it is simply just a standard default setup for the RC16. The KTM's not been touched, it's, it's basically everything is the exact same as you would get if you were to jump on and play this game yourself. Now the only thing I did change of course as you can see in the bottom right corner of your screen is the, uh, the actual electronics. So I've dropped the traction control, dropped the anti wheelie and put engine brake to 4. I do appreciate 4 engine brake, I think it's a good balance of uh, EB let's say. So of course as well if you're looking for guides to improve on MotoGP 22 or even 21 if you're still uh, playing on the uh, 21st installment, 
you can check out my channel. I've got a lot of guides on there already, so you can you'll be able to see what I'm doing with the controller, how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it, and uh, you'll be able to learn a few tips and tricks from me as well. But uh, this is actually a pretty good lap so far. We made a mess into the Anhiel Nieto corner, but we're actually not looking too bad here. We could potentially be going to the top of the pile here. Good late breaking into the Lorenzo corner. We'll now bring on the power with the bit of slipstream activated as well across the line. We have gone top underneath the flying saucer and back. Danny Pedroza goes top of the pile with a 136.627. Not bad. Not bad at all. Maybe this is finally beginning to click. And maybe this is setting us up for the dual sense controller overlay for more for more often. Maybe this is the uh, the way to go. I feel good in this first sector. The soft option front has really made a difference. Possibly the medium... Ah, that was a little bit wide there in Tito Ponds, but it's not a problem. As we now bring on the power once again, try and line the bike up. You can see the left analog stick just moving gently into the position as we now go firm on the brakes for the, coincidentally, the Danny Pedroza corner. Very strong into turn six, and so he should be. As we now go to the left-hand side, keep it in nice and tight for turn seven. Line the bike up onto the rumble strip and then bring it back over to the left for the Jorge Martinez Aspar corner. I usually like to go a bit tighter there, but deeper wasn't the, wasn't really that bad. Can we get this corner right this time around into the Angel Nieto corner? It's pretty good. And then into uh, Pelaqui. It's not bad. Five and a half tenths of a second. Oh, it's just dropping a little bit as we now go into the very fast sectors from Crivier and then into Ferrari for the right-hand side. Nice and tight. Beautiful. We are going to improve. As long as we get the Lorenzo corner right, which we do. Pedroza's arch nemesis and rival. We go into his final corner, and it looks like we've got the job done. I'll tell you what, guys, I think I'm adapting. I'm quite enjoying the DualSense controller after all. Happy with P1. I'm gl glad we finally got that done. But I think that is the end of the video. So, guys and gals, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments section down below. If you want to see more controller overlay guides, also let me know because I am keen to do some more. And of course, with the DualSense controller, adds a bit of challenge for me as well. So guys, thanks for watching the video. Like, comment and subscribe. Consider becoming a member of the Dot Trace Pit Crew. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.